Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. My most recent video training resource is 9 Essential Excel Skills. 4 hours of training with 25 individual video tutorials. For Essential Skill number 3, I've identified creating and using named cell ranges in your formulas. This skill is 2 video tutorials for a total of 16 minutes. In today's lesson, I'm going to walk you through some of the top tips that I use in Essential Skill number 3. Now, I like to say that creating name ranges in Excel has two main purposes. Purpose number one, they make wonderful navigational bookmarks. Purpose number two for creating name ranges, especially when you are using them in formulas, it makes writing the formula easier, it makes explaining the formula easier, and it makes remembering what you put into the formula easier to remember. All right, let's explore reason number one for creating name ranges. They make great navigational bookmarks. So here for this cell, I'd like to create a navigational bookmark. The easiest way to create a name for an individual cell or a range of cells is to just select it and then come up into the name box. The name box is to the left of the formula bar and type your name. It must begin with a letter and can contain no spaces. So I'm going to type this name range as Danny and then hit enter. I like to test it out. So click away and then use the drop down menu and any names that you've created for this workbook are available. Now, as I mentioned, it makes a great navigational bookmark. So from any worksheet in the workbook, when you quickly want to go to another location, if you've created a name range, use the drop down in the name box and you're quickly uh, taken to that bookmark. You're taken to that name range. Now, reason number two, creating name ranges and using them in your formulas. It makes them easier to write, easier to explain, and easier to remember. Well, here we have a selection of uh, departments with sales for the year. And what we would probably want to do is use the sum function. So let's highlight the range and use equal sum. And I'll use tab. And then I'm going to make my selection. Now, I've selected a range of cells to hold the formulas for each of the departments. But all I have to do if I've selected the range for my destination is just make one selection, control enter. And now I have that range. Now, that's terrific. But what if you would like to make reference to a sum or an average of sales at some other location in your workbook? It would make much more sense if you created a name range of sales rather than this reference of E5 through E16. So let me use Control Z to undo this. And I'm going to select the cells that I want to name as a range. Now I'm going to show you another way that we can create names. From the Formulas tab in the ribbon in Excel 2010 or Excel 2007, come over here and define names and click the Name Manager. Now here you see your first name that you've created. We want to create a new name. So we've made a selection. We want to use the Define Name. So we want to define a name for our uh, selection. Now, the label on top is what Excel is saying, ha ha, Danny, you probably want to use the name sales for this range that you've selected. And that's true. That's exactly what I want to do. Now, before I click OK, I want to also show you that beginning with Excel 2007, you can define the scope for your name range. The default is for all the worksheets in your workbook. But you can limit the scope to an individual worksheet if you wish. So this looks fine to me. I'm going to say great. So now when I write the formula equals sum, I can begin typing my name range if I know it. And there it is. You see using proper case. I'll select it, write parentheses, and there it goes. Now, this is really valuable when we want to uh, create an executive summary, for example. So when I'm away from uh, the contents of that range, when I want to use a sum or an average or a min or a max, I can easily do that. Equals sum. And this time I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, F3, to bring up the Paste Names dialog box. 
that's the formula that I want to use. Right parentheses, and there you go. Now, let me show you another way that we can uh, create names. This time we're going to create names from a selection. We can either come up after we make the selection and use the create names from selection or the keyboard shortcut control shift F3. So in this case, I'm going to select the labels that I want to use for my name ranges and then select the cells that will be in that name range. And again, on the Formulas tab, either click the Create from Selection, or as you see, the keyboard shortcut in the screen tip, Control Shift F3. So Excel is going to say, ha ha, you probably want to use these labels that are in the top row as the names for the cells that you selected. That's exactly right. And again, I'm going to be using the default, which is workbook wide in scope. So now, for example, on operations, I could use the max function, equals max, to get the high value. And in this case, I want to use operations. Let's use the F3 keyboard shortcut for the paste names. Operations, click OK, right parentheses, and there you go. Now, these are linked. So notice over here that there is the formula. I got the max for the operations. If I came back into my original and in operations I put in a higher value, let's say 1500, it's going to change the result. I also want to make a change over here and put in $5,000. So notice before I make the change in the sum of sales, the total is 6934. And now when I come over here into the executive summary, you see how that's changed. And you also see how that high value, the max value for operations has changed. So really creating name ranges is a, it, it, it's a must. It is an essential skill. Now in the second video in this series, I show you how to apply names when you have existing formulas. So explaining a formula for gross profit is going to be a lot easier if you first create the names using the labels, in this case to the left, and then in your formula say that gross profit is a result of taking revenue minus cost of goods sold. That's easier to write. It's certainly easier to explain than saying, well, it's a G21 minus G22. It's certainly much easier to remember. So just to recap, I have two individual video tutorials and a 16-minute segment for essential skill number three, using name ranges and formulas, and in the uh, other video, how to apply them to existing formulas. It's very easy to use the tutorial. I created it to run an Adobe uh, Reader, which is a free program. And I encourage you to visit my secure online shopping center, shop.thecompanyrocks.com. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.